Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today we're going to talk about why finding the best portrait lens is a lie. Don't forget to check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. Join my group on Facebook. It's called Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. And follow me on Instagram. I have a funny Instagram feed. You'll enjoy it. Just look for at Boo Ray Perry on Instagram. Okay, so why is the best portrait lens a lie? I know that's a clickbait title. I know that you're you're like, <laughs> you know, we have to play the game. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. I know it's a clickbait title, but it's true. It's absolutely true that this idea that there's a perfect portrait lens, a perfect portrait uh, millimeter for a lens is absolutely a lie. So let's look at some images. Whenever you start researching and trying to find the best portrait lens, the consensus usually tends to come back to somewhere around 85 millimeters. They'll say an 85 millimeter lens is the best portrait lens. And one of the ways that they will prove this to you is that they will show you a series of pictures from a model. And this series of pictures will show how the model's face distorts over time based on different lenses. So if you're using a 24 millimeter lens, you get this face. And if you're using a 110, you get that face and so forth and so on. And they'll say the best one, the best one is definitely going to be like an 85 millimeter lens. That's what you need. That's the best portrait lens. So let's put that to the test, shall we? Here's a series of pictures that I took of my famous, world famous, really, model. Uh, and if you look at these images, you will see that my face doesn't seem to distort very much. Right? It's, it's pretty much the same in all of the images. And there's slight variations, you know, but mostly it's pretty much the same picture. Here's the thing. The picture at the top left, this one up here, this was shot at 34 millimeters. Uh, 35 millimeters. And when I say that, by the way, I'm saying equivalent because this was shot with an APS-C camera. So it wasn't actually shot at 35 millimeters. It was shot at a lower number than that. But it's equivalent to a 35 millimeter on a full frame camera. And that's what I'm going to say for the rest of the video. So this is a 35 millimeter. This is 50 millimeters. This is 85. This is 104. This is 130. And this is 210 millimeters. And yet, where's the giant swing? Where is the giant, oh my gosh, look at how much my face distorts. We're talking about 35 millimeters all the way to 210 millimeters. Where's the distortion? Why isn't it there? I mean, 85 millimeters is the best lens, right? Right? Ah, here's why the distortion isn't there. Here's the original pictures. In every one of these pictures, I was standing the same distance from the camera. 10 feet. I paced off about 10 feet, and that's where I stood. So you can see up here with the uh, 35 millimeter, it's really a super wide picture. And then down here at the 210 millimeter, we're really close on my face. But then I cropped all of them in so you could just see my face. And as you can see, there's not much distortion. Why is that? Here's why. Because when it comes to facial distortion from your lens, it's not so much what focal length you're using as it is how far is your subject from the camera for every focal length there is a perfect distance to make sure that you get a good clean face that is the right representation of that person's face the most accurate representation that you can get of that person's face uh, this number varies all right <laughs> there's a zone that is considered to be like, this is a good zone in almost any lens you use. If you shoot in this distance, you're going to be okay. And that zone, some people say it's 6 to 10 feet. Some people say it's 8 to 12 feet. Uh, I think you kind of have to figure out that zone for yourself, for you and your camera and your lenses. Uh, but I shot all of these at 10. And as you can see, there isn't much facial distortion. Because if I'm taking a portrait, right, and I want that portrait to be really wide, then this lens here, the 23 millimeter lens, is just fine. And if I'm taking one where I want it to be really close, then the 210 millimeter, that's really fine too. As long as I'm an appropriate distance from the camera. In this case, it's about 10 feet. What if I'm not 10 feet from the camera? Ah, well, now it starts to look different. So here is a 24. Four millimeter? Is this my 24 millimeter? Yeah, my 24 millimeter, and and I'm close, right? And then right next to it, we'll throw up an 83 millimeter 
where I'm close. And these are shot at the same distance. I'm probably about four feet away from the camera here. Ah, right now we see the big facial distortion that we always see when we look at these things online. And this would make you say, well, obviously the 83 millimeter lens is a better portrait lens than the 16 millimeter, the 24 millimeter lens is. I'm sorry, the 24 millimeter. So obviously the best lens for portraits is the 83 millimeter, not the 24 millimeter. No, it's the best lens for portraits if you have to be standing like, you know, four or five or six feet away, it's the best lens. But if you back up, then it's not the best lens anymore. If you're taking a wider portrait of somebody, if you're taking a picture of somebody in front of the Grand Canyon and you back up, well, then the distortion that you're getting from the 24 millimeter is going to go away and you're going to be just fine. So let's look at it a different way. For these pictures, I framed. So what I did was I took three pictures at three different focal lengths, but in all three of the pictures, I moved my body Camera's on a tripod. I moved my body so that my head was about the same size in all three of the pictures. And then I cropped in. So look at the difference. On the left, we've got 33 millimeters, 51 millimeters in the middle, and 83 millimeters at the far end. And now you're seeing more distortion, right? More distortion. On the far end here at 83 millimeters, this looks like a better portrait lens than the 33. Why? Because there's distortion with the 33. See how my face is starting to distort here? Right. But it's not really that the 83 is a better portrait lens. It's just if you're framing me up this way, then the 83 is a better lens. However, if you back me up so that you're shooting half my body or more than that, then suddenly the 33 becomes just fine and my face looks just fine. So the reason I say that it's, it's a lie that there's a perfect portrait lens is because that only applies if you're saying that you're going to use a certain lens, a certain millimeter from a certain distance every single time. If that's the case, sure. But is that what we do? Is that what anyone does? You know, maybe if you're a headshot photographer working in a studio, everything's marked on the floor and you shoot the same way every time. But if you're out and about in the world, that's not the case at all. So, the purpose of this video is is to help people who are looking for the perfect portrait lens and to let them know that if you think that getting an 85 millimeter lens is going to give you a perfect portrait every time, it's not. It's probably going to give you a good portrait as long as you're framing that person up to where it's about a half body. And then we run into another problem. <laughs> yeah, here's the other problem. So here's two images. And these two images are shot at the same focal length, 82 millimeters. And there's a little bit of difference in the two images. If you look closely, you can see that the one on the right, this one over here, is a little bit flatter. And this is a term that, that photographers will use. I'll say it's a little bit flatter, whereas the one on the left uh, is not. Uh, there's a little distortion on the one on the left. My face is a little bit more pinched towards the camera, a little bit more narrow. My nose comes out as a little bit bigger, right? Okay. So these images were shot with the same focal length at 83 millimeters. And I framed up the one over here, the one that's kind of pinched. I framed this up in a traditional headshot, right? Where the, the lens is cutting off, the, the camera is cutting off my shoulders just a little bit. This is like a traditional crop for a headshot. And then on the one on the right, I went wider. So it's almost a half, pretty much a half body crop. And then when I crop them in, you see the difference. So technically speaking, this at 83 millimeters, which is I'm probably standing about six to eight feet from the camera. This technically is a more authentic headshot because this is closer to what my face looks like. However, does that mean I like it more? Does that mean my client's gonna like it more? Or my friend or whoever I'm taking a picture of? Because the one on the left, mm, yeah, my nose is a little bit bigger, but I personally don't really notice that. What I do notice is that my face looks a little bit thinner. And I kind of like that. And I also like that I seem to be more dynamic in the picture on the left. Why is that? Well, because I'm closer to the camera, the depth of field is more shallow. So the background is more blurry. And if you look at, like, look at my neck, you see my neck here, how the, you know, what I call the chicken skin on my neck, how it's, how it's more blurry over here. It's more detailed. Look at my ear. My ear is sharper in the picture on the right than it is on the one on the left. So even though, technically speaking, the one on the left is a little distorted, 
I kind of like it. And we're getting that a lot nowadays where people like that more. And the reason is because people are coming up taking pictures of themselves on their cell phones. And cell phones use a wide angle lens and they hold the phone too close to their face. And so as a result, it distorts the picture. And people think that that's what they look like. They, they like that. That's what I look like. And so a lot of times when I'm shooting headshots, I tend to set up this way where it does distort the face just a little bit. But people like that. It seems more cinematic and they like it more. So not only are we at a position where <laughs> you can't say an 85 millimeter lens is the best portrait lens. But even if you're using an 85 millimeter lens, there's so many factors in play here. You know, distance from the camera because the best, what I think is the best look for a portrait may not be what you think is the best look for a portrait or your client or your friend. So it's so subjective that it's really hard to say this is the best lens. So what does this all mean when we're all said and done? I mean, this is great, Beret, you've explained all this photography theory stuff to me, but now I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I just need a good lens for taking portraits and I don't know what lens to buy because you've, you've confused me with your wild witching ways. Um, what it means is you have to figure out what you like and then you have to buy the lens for that, the millimeters for that, and you have to always shoot that distance if you want to reproduce that particular look. Yeah, it's not as easy as you thought it was going to be. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to put this lens on my camera and then everything's going to be great. That's not the way it works. I'm so sorry to tell you because photography is difficult and involved. And the more you do it, the more you learn, the more you have to learn. You never stop learning. And this is one of those big things. I mean, I'm really still working on this stuff personally to this day myself. I will still go back and look at some of my other headshots or portraits that I'll do. And I'll go, oh, my goodness, I was too close to my subject on that image. And I just didn't see it at the time. But I see it now because I'm always learning and you have to be always learning too. Now, to be fair, a nice 85 millimeter prime. If you're a prime shooter, you can't go wrong with a nice 85 millimeter prime. You're going to love that lens. Just know that if you shoot so that you just get the head in the frame, it's going to distort because you're going to have to get so close in order to do that. It's going to give you a little bit of distortion. So know that if you want it to be a little flat and more authentic, you want to step back probably at least, say, 8 feet, 10 feet, and that's probably going to give you what you want. But let's say you're not in a situation where you can step back 8 or 10 feet. Well, then that might not be the lens for you because there is no perfect portrait lens. Throw me a like and throw me a subscribe, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.